Welcome to another X-Ray Tips and Tricks. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a question that uh, we get asked quite often, which is, will radiation damage our electronic components? So before we get into the presentation, let me give you a, a bit of my background. I worked for quite a while at Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory. Uh, as you can see here, there's a big uh, uh, tunnel underground where we smashed protons and antiprotons to uh, create subatomic particles to figure out, you know, to answer several uh, high physics questions among them, what's the, uh, you know, the origin of the universe. And, uh, and uh, that environment has a lot of radiation. For that reason, uh, we did a lot of studies to understand how radiation will impact electronic components. And the reality is, this is a fairly simple question, right? Is radiation going to kill my component? It's a simple question, but unfortunately, it's not a simple answer. It, you, as you're going to see in this presentation, uh, the, 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 there are several parameters, several things that, that you have to take in consideration when trying to understand if radiation will damage your electronic component. So if, you're, if you are looking for a simple answer, yes or no, I'm sorry, there isn't. Because... Uh, the answer will depend on, among other things, uh, the type of component that you're looking at, uh, even the type of technology your component was built on, if a 0 0.8 micron uh, process with HP or a 0.25 micron process with TSMC, uh, the, uh, uh, the same amount of radiation will have different impacts on these different types of technologies. It will also depend on what kind of radiation, as you're going to see here, uh, you're going to be uh, subjecting your component to. And not only that, how much of that radiation you're going to be subjecting your component to. So we're going to try to uh, uh, address some of these issues in this presentation. Uh, there are whole conferences. IEEE has uh, NSRAC, which is a conference dedicated to uh, the uh, effects of radiation on electronic components. And if you do want to learn more, feel free to give us a call. Uh, and we're more than happy to walk through some of these, uh, these questions so you can understand how much radiation uh, can your com uh, component uh, withstand. So uh, just a quick background on that, as I mentioned before, not all radiation is equal. It depends on what kind of radiation you're going to be um, <clears throat> subjecting your component to. Uh, uh, so here's a quick uh, list of different types of radiation, uh, including alpha, uh, protons, uh, electrons, photons, and neutrons. We make X-ray machines, so we're usually uh, concerned about X-ray radiation or photons. Uh, at Fermilab, where I used to work, uh, as I mentioned uh, to you, we had a lot of protons, alphas, and betas being created inside that, uh, you know, when you smash particles together, you create a soup of different subparticles. And those particles are incredibly damaging to electronic components. Not as much photons, like uh, X-rays and, and especially the low energy X-rays we work with. Uh, and as you can see here, you can see one of the reasons that alpha uh, and beta particles, they, as particles, they have a tendency of stopping uh, inside uh, uh, material. So alphas have the shortest penetration depth Betas have a little bit longer, and gammas and X-rays have a tendency to just go through the component, uh, and that's why they're so good for imaging because they go through the component. We can separate uh, radiation as electromagnetic or uh, subatomic particles. Electromagnetic, as you, as we talked before, we have X-rays and gamma rays, uh, and the difference between X-rays and gamma rays is the amount of energy or the energy level. You know, the lower energy we usually call X-rays, the higher energy stuff we call gamma rays. And then particles, you, you have protons, neutrons, electrons, pions, muons. We're not gonna discuss uh, particles much because, you know, it's not the kind of stuff we do. Uh, we're gonna focus more on the X-rays and, you know, how they can damage components if they can. We are subject to radiation all day long, 24 seven, okay? You have, uh, radiation come from uh, the uh, uh, the ground you live in. You know, granite has radiation. Uh, uh, concrete has radiation being emitted uh, at you 24-7. We have 
uh, radiation coming from uh, 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 space, okay, cosmic radiation that comes. So the higher you ha you are, the more radiation, you know, the thinner is the shielding that we call atmosphere. So the more radiation you're going to be subject to. And depending on location, Colorado, for example, have a higher background radiation than, than what we have here in California. So uh, depending on where you are, you're going to have uh, higher or lower background radiation. Uh, and... Um, so those are background natural occurring uh, radiation sources. We also have quite a few man-made radiation sources. Uh, like uh, um, you, when your component, uh, when you ship your component, that part is going to be subject to radiation at, uh, at the airport because it's going to be inspected uh, at the post office, at the ports of entry, and uh, you know delivery companies, FedEx, USPS, UPS, they have X-ray machines to look inside those packages, right? And because they want to see uh, what's inside the package for mainly security, right? And then other companies, um, you know, your contract manufacturer or your uh, even your uh, distributor, component distributor might be looking at those components with X-rays for quality assurance, failure analysis if it's the uh, um, you know the uh, original component manufacturer, and even counterfeit kind of detection in case you have a good uh, distributor. Uh, who's going to be looking at those components before they ship it to you. So, when we talk about radiation damage, uh, we already went over the type of radiation. It has a huge impact, right? Particles are much, much worse than photons. High-energy photons are more damaging than low-energy photons. Uh, the radiation flux is also a lot. So, not only what type of radiation, how what energy of that radiation and how much of that radiation uh, have a huge impact. And then the fourth component you have to understand is how much time you're going to be exposing your component to that specific radiation, right? So let's go over it again. The type of radiation, the energy of that radiation, the how much of that radiation per second, so the flux of those uh, photons or particles, and finally, how long are they going to be uh, you, how long are you going to expose your component to that radiation? Now, <clears throat> uh, the three main damages uh, that radiation makes on a component are bulk damage, surface damage, and then uh, SE, or single event upset. A uh, bulk damage is when you dislodge a piece of silicon atom from the, the, from the crystal, right? Uh, and the X-ray photons that you're going to find in a you know standard X-ray inspection machine you really can't produce that kind of damage. So let's take bulk damage out of the equation. Okay, you can't do that. Surface damage, on the other hand, is yeah, it can happen depending on again the component, the flux, and uh, the exposure time. And uh, in, in basically the process is if you let radiation. Uh, uh, exposed component for radiation for long enough, you end up creating uh, electron hole pairs uh, in that uh, in the oxide, and eventually those electron hole pairs can be moved and create a problem on the on semiconductor. And finally, single event upset. Single event upset is only happens if the component is actually working, right? And when your uh, electronic component, for example, you have um, you know, hundreds, thousands of millions of flip-flops on a processor or an FPGA. And uh, if a radiation uh, is able to deposit enough energy on the base of one of those flip-flops so that a flip becomes a flop or flop becomes a flip, that's what we call single event upset. And again, it only happens uh, if uh, you are... Uh, looking at, for example, a, a memory that's been programmed, right? You can, you can corrupt the program of that uh, memory, or if you have a processor that's actually working and you can damage the result of the, of the processor. Uh, component manufacturers uh, design something called triple mode redundancy uh, to mitigate this problem. So imagine that uh, you have, uh, instead of one flip-flop that can be flipped or flopped incorrectly, you have three flip-flops for each bit of information. So to flip from zero to one or one to zero, you need at least two of the flip-flops, right? So there's a voting uh, circuitry that decides 
uh, if you flip and flop. So if one of them gets corrupted, then you are safe. You don't uh, you don't have a single event upset. Of course, you can argue. Oh, what if two of them are you know damaged? You know, flipped at the same time. Well, if you space them geographically on your die, uh, chances that you are going to I mean, chances you're going to flip one already very small, right? Chances you're going to be flipping two at the same time are minuscule. So um, you know, it's not zero, but they convert to zero rapidly. The amount of radiation we're exposed to every day, uh, you know, uh, if you are um, flying on an airplane, for example, we're looking at 0 0.6 mR hour, which is the uh, which is FDA's recommendation for um, uh, as the maximum exposure uh, at uh, half, uh, at, two, at two inches from the surface of the X-ray machine. Uh, and when you're flying, you know, a cruise altitude of 35,000 feet in the sky on an airplane, you're going to be subject to neutrons, protons, pions, muons, and a whole range of, of uh, uh, atomic subparticles uh, that come directly from, from, uh, from space. Again, and, those, and we can go over and have a whole presentation of what creates radiation from space, you know, dying stars, uh, uh, black holes, and, and the whole range of things. But the... The important thing is that uh, when you fly, when you're up in the sky, the th this this layer of, of shield that we have called atmosphere is much thinner. As a result, you're subject to much more radiation. <clears throat> so let's start putting, when you talk about, oh, it's, it's, is that X-ray machine going to damage my component? Well, let's, let's think it through. First, if it's flying... Um, in, on any type of cargo, right? Uh, that component that you're buying has already been subjected to radiation, right? At the airport or at point of entry, uh, on, uh, on cargo inspection if, at a port or or FedEx, I mean, UPS, I mean, those guys, they are going to be inspecting those boxes, those components, if you want it or not, because it's a security issue. And... Uh, so it's not uncommon to have an X-ray component being inspected several times in the supply chain, right? That's that that's the way it happens. Uh, and um, the 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 energy, the amount of energy, the amount of flux, and the and the energy level of those cargo inspection machines are much higher than anything you can have in your lab uh, to look at X-ray components, uh, to look at electronic components, uh, <clears throat> because usually we work between eighty and 160 kV when you're looking at the turn components, you know, go, you don't really need to go any anywhere higher than 160 kV. And so limited energy, right? So you're not going to be working at higher energy, lower energy. Uh, time is also crucial. Uh, if we're dealing with customers and in, in, in components that have any type of uh, issue with radiation, we limit that amount of time the component can be inspected to you know, 200 milliseconds to half a second max. So that's how much time the component's going to be exposed uh, to radiation. And so if you're looking at exposing a component, let's say a, 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 hack, a second, a second and a half at 80 kV, you're looking at a 50, 50 uh, millirad of uh, total dose, which is not a lot. It's actually very, very small. So, um, you know, worst case scenario, you're going to be looking at you know, have the component exposed for uh, a, a second and a half. And as I said, the at the primary beam or right in the maximum order flux, you're going to be looking at most 200 to 500 milliseconds. And you have to automate acquisition, right? So you can't you can't imagine that you're going to have a human being looking at radiation at, at the, the images, right, for half a second. So that's what we need to automate. You have collect image fast, and then you can have automation so that a uh, piece of artificial intelligence is going to look at the images and determine if they're good or bad. Or you can have a human being looking at those images after they've been acquired. So that's a, a critical way to minimize radiation exposure in your component. Time, do it fast. <clears throat> Airplane parts, uh, in the lifetime of a 737, for example, you're looking at 50,000 hours of, uh, uh, of flight we're looking at you know 
30,000 MR of, uh, of uh, radiation exposure just due to background radiation. So compared to the little bit that we do to inspect for quality or counterfeit uh, detection, you know, looking at the big pictures is actually not a lot. What we try to convey in this presentation is that there's no silver pool, there's no easy answer if uh, radiation uh, is going to damage or not damage your electronic component. Uh, the bottom line is, if you have any concerns, you, if you think you have an issue, give us a call. We've been doing this for a while, and, uh, and we can walk you through uh, how to determine if radiation, if the actual machine you're using to... Uh, you know, for quality control, for counterfeit detection, if that X-ray uh, system is going to damage your component or not. And if you think there are any issues, we have a whole bunch of techniques uh, to make the inspection faster, uh, to provide shielding for your component or for your board, and, um, and uh, uh, to, you know, reduce the flux as much as possible and to reduce the energy level as much as possible. Hope you enjoyed the presentation. Feel free to call us anytime. We love to talk about radiation. That's what we do for a living. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Quite what you want.